Okay, uh, welcome back to a new video. I'm sorry that I was not able to make any programming video for a long time, but uh, I was quite busy and preparing these videos always takes a lot of time. So I thought to bridge now the time until I can publish a new one uh, by concentrating a little bit on uh, some physics videos, which was also the main intention in the beginning to actually create this channel. So I hope I can really uh, help you a little bit, uh, especially if you are an undergraduate student, a school student, um, to help you a little bit to pass your examinations, to um, yeah, calculate your exercise that you have to do, your problem sheets and so on. So I thought maybe it's a good idea, uh, instead of giving just lectures, to really go through examples to, to solve some uh, exercises with you together and uh, explain all steps uh, very carefully. So at the end you are, if you have some problems with some of the for terminologies, for example, then you are able to still solve these exercises uh, easily and then you are fully prepared for your next examination, for example. So I would like to start now with very simple examples, uh, here in this case, for example, mechanics or kinematics even, um, regarding, for example, speed, velocity, acceleration and so on. And uh, then after yeah, calculating many of these examples, um, it, it it will help you to to get a feeling of what things you what formulas what uh, what what things you have to use in order to calculate certain things. Yeah. So um, in this case, we will start very simple and we will increase the level of difficulty uh, throughout these exercises. Uh, yeah, continuously you can say. Uh, but for the time being, as I said, we will start with a very simple example. Yeah. So uh, here in this case, uh, the first exercise which I would like to calculate uh, or which I would uh, derive the solution you can say uh, is the following. Um, all these exercises are actually related to uh, average uh, speeds. So in this case uh, the first one is called a person traveled from Cologne to Frankfurt and I checked this with Google Maps it's um, exactly 190 kilometer. Um, so he used his car and he needed 2.5 hours to cover this distance. No? And um, now the question is, what is the average speed of, of this car? And uh, yeah, in, in principle, it's very simple. You can think very complicated in, in this case, but uh, in principle, you only have to remember one formula in order to solve this. And this is the definition of speed. Yeah? Uh, so not of velocity. This would be uh, uh, this would not only uh, have an absolute value, but also direction. In this case, we are only interested in the absolute value, which means in the speed. So the average speed is actually given as v, this is the speed, divided uh, is equal to the distance that has been covered, d, divided by the time that is required for that. So you only have to calculate this fraction, d over t, and you both things are given. The distance is given, which is actually 190 uh, kilometer, and the time is given, this is 2.5 hours and now the units which we have is kilometer per hour. Usually I say that you have to convert them into SI units, but um, this would be in this case, for example, meter and seconds, but uh, having a, a speed in, in meter per second does not make any sense when you talk about cars. So in this case, I would say um, we can we can let the unit as it is. So we can only calculate here 190 by 2.5 and this gives a value of uh, 76 kilometer per hour, which is the unit here. So, yeah, as I said, this was a very simple example, but nevertheless, it's also good to, to start simple and then, as I said, to increase the uh, level of difficulty slowly. So I hope that uh, with this uh, example, there is not any problem and we can continue now with the next exercise. So this is a little bit more complicated, but you will see that it's actually the same principle, we want to calculate the average speed also in this case, but the formula which we have to use is a little bit different huh? and it is also a very important formula which you should remember. Um, so here the text says another person traveled from Munich to Frankfurt and this distance is 395 kilometer and the average speed during this driving is 120 kilometer per hour. Huh? And then the person stays there in Frankfurt for a short period of time, so short that you can actually neglect the timing there. 
Uh, and uh, then he continues his journey from Frankfurt to Hamburg and this is again a distance of 498 kilometer and the average speed here is 80 kilometer per hour. And now what we want to calculate is the total average speed which the person had from Munich to, um, to Hamburg. And uh, here in this case, uh, it's uh, it, it, as I, this I didn't mention before, but um, the, when we talk about average speeds, it doesn't matter how the speed is fluctuating or changing throughout the travel of this person. Yeah, so he, in some cases he might be a little bit faster, in some cases he might be uh, he might be slower. Maybe there is a construction yard on the motorway, but it doesn't matter. At the end, the only thing which we are interested in is actually the average speed. Yeah. So we can neglect everything else. So in this case, um, sometimes it's it's quite useful to make a kind of sketch, uh, especially if you if you want to um, if you want to uh, if the text is a little bit longer and you want to try to understand it as good as possible, uh, and you are maybe not familiar even with so long texts. So you can try to make a small sketch for your own self to understand it. Uh, in a little bit better way. So as I said, in this case, um, we had a person who is going actually from uh, from from Munich, and there he travels um, 395 kilometer uh, with a speed of 120 kilometer per hour, and there he traveled to Frankfurt. And from there he traveled then again 498 kilometer uh, with a speed of 80 kilometer per hour up to Hamburg. Yeah. And now <clears throat> we will use the same formula which we have also used before. So the average speed is in this case d divided by t. But now <clears throat> we have two distances. Yeah? First from Munich to Frankfurt and this we call maybe D1 and then the second one from Frankfurt to Hamburg and this we call D2 and we have to divide this then by also we have two timings of course T1 plus T2 yeah? the timing for D1 and the timing for D2. However, we don't know T1 and T2. They are not given in the exercise. So what we have to do, we have to substitute them with something which we know. And we know the distances and we know the velocity. So we can actually, uh, and now I will make this here maybe on the side in another color, uh, maybe red. So uh, we know this formula already. V equal D, uh, sorry, V over um, V O v equal d over t and this we can of course also uh, yeah, solve for t and this would be t equals d over v yeah, distance over speed and then actually now we can switch again to black and now actually uh, we can um, replace this t here with the help of this formula that we derived so we can write here d1 plus d2 divided by and then this would lead to d1 divided by uh, v1 plus d2 divided by v2 and yeah then everything else is, is uh, we know yeah we know the distances we know this uh, the speeds that we have uh, calculated or that we have that are given in the exercise actually so we can now directly insert all the values and i can do this one time to to get a little bit familiar with this so here we had a 390 um, 398 here we have 490 sorry here we had um, 395 kilometer plus 498 kilometer and then we have to divide this by 395 kilometer uh, divided by uh, 120 kilometer per hour and here we had uh, 498 kilometer divided by 80 kilometer per hour for the speed and when we go down a little bit 
then we can here actually, uh, yeah, we can use now calculator to calculate this thing. And it's also good to really insert the numbers together with the units, just because you can then see what unit cancels out and what unit remains. So this kilometer and these kilometers would actually cancel out and kilometer per hour remains. So at the end, uh, I calculated this with a calculator and at, I got as a result 93.8 kilometer per hour as the final result. So you can see the, um, the average speed is here a little bit closer to the 80 kilometer than to the 120 kilometer. And this is just because of the longer distance uh, that has been traveled with the smaller speed, uh, just to get a little bit idea about it. Yeah, and now coming to the last one, which is again similar to the previous one. Uh, and this is the third formula, which you actually have to remember for uh, calculating average speeds. And here it says a third person drove on the motorway with a speed of 130 km per hour for a time of one hour. And after that, he reduced his speed to 100 km per hour for two hours. What is the average speed? So now uh, it is very similar to the previous one, only not the... Uh, the, in the previous one, the um, speed and the distance was given, and now here the speed and the time is given. So again, we use the same formula, V equal, uh, not S, sorry, this would be in German, uh, D over T. Um, and again, we have two distances here, so it would be D1 over uh, plus D2 uh, <coughs> over, uh, nah, over T1 plus T2. And now we have to actually replace here uh, this D1 and D2 because these are not known, but we can use the same formula here for V again. And we write here V1 T1 plus V2 T2 divided by, uh, yeah, the rest we can let here, uh, T1 plus uh, T2. It's actually similar to um, to a mean value, to a weighted mean value that which we are calculating. But uh, okay, uh, this goes a little bit beyond this, I think. So actually, um, what we have here now is uh, is uh, yeah uh, directly the values that are given in the in the exercise we can directly insert here into this formula. So um, again, we have here 100 kilometer per hour times a time of one hour plus uh, sorry, uh, here we had, uh, sorry, we had of course here our 130 kilometer per hour times one hour plus 100 kilometer per hour times two hours. And then again, our long fraction and the T1 was one hour plus two hours. And the reason why I have chosen these kind of Values is because I want to show that in some cases it's maybe not a good idea to directly insert everything into your calculator, but it's maybe sometimes good to think about first whether it's easier maybe to solve it in your <clears throat> mind. So uh, you have here 130 times 1 gives uh, 130. The units I will now at the moment neglect because we know at the end it should be kilometer per hour. So <clears throat> we have here 130 plus uh, 100 times 2 is 200 uh, divided by 1 plus th 2 is 3. And uh, as I said, the unit should be kilometer per hour. So now we can actually calculate 130 plus 200. Uh, and this is um, 330, if I'm not wrong, divided by 3 kilometer per hour. And then we can finally also um, yeah, calculate this. And it uh, gives a value of 110 kilometer per hour, which is then the final result for the average speed of this uh, person. <clears throat> and here, as I said, uh, typing th these things into the calculator would be much more complicated. It takes more time. You, the probability to make a mistake is much, high, much higher. So uh, it's better, I think, to um, really take a look. And in some cases, some, some teachers are giving exercises in a way that you can solve them without calculator. And then it helps if you have one time thought about it. Yeah, and I hope these three examples were quite useful. Um, if you if you like these videos, uh, maybe you can 
you can write a small comment into the comment section. Um, then I know that maybe uh, I should continue with this. At least uh, it helped a lot of students in the past who I actually, um, uh, yeah, who I actually taught with these kind of um, uh, exercises. I made them ready to to pass the examinations, to calculate the exercise sheets, and so on. And uh, they were quite uh, quite happy with that. So I hope that um, it also helps you a little bit to to get familiar with the fundamental physics, as I said. And um, yeah, and uh, the the level of difficulty will increase in any case. So um, understanding the fundamental things is very important to to go beyond this and also to understand the more complicated stuff later easily. Uh, but what I noticed is that when when you have already problems with the fundamental things. Uh, it, it gets more and more difficult later and uh, then people are giving up. They are completely uh, resigning from physics and say that we don't want to have anything to do with that just because there was a little bit of lack of understanding in the beginning with some calculations and everything went then worse in the future. Yeah? So I hope, as I said, you enjoyed it. Um, if you like the video, especially uh, hit the like button. Um, hit the subscribe button uh, if you don't want to miss any further video and hopefully see you soon not only for these videos but also for a new programming video hopefully uh, and until then see you later and sorry <clears throat> I didn't realize that uh, the final result was actually uh, behind my camera I will scroll a little bit down so now you can see it 110 uh, kilometer per hour